aging and frailty. This is something that seems to go hand in hand. And most people just accept that as time passes on the calendar, we're going to become more frail. Well, actually not. That's not true whatsoever. In fact, it's a condition known as sarcopenia. Now, this is something I've spoken about before, but never done it with a nutrition expert. And covering a recent study that we've come across dealing with sarcopenia. And let me tell you right now, if you happen to not be a senior and you're looking to turn this off, stay tuned. I promise you, this has a lot to do with you. Going over and covering sarcopenia and the effects of and how to prevent it with our nutrition specialist, Tanya Green, today on the Personal Age Fitness Podcast. Hey, good day and welcome to the Personal Age Fitness Podcast. My name is Garrett Williamson. I'm president of Personal Age Fitness. Thank you so much for joining us today on a, gosh, we can go all day on this topic, I'm sure. So, Yes. <laughs> Look, I want to welcome to the show, back to the show again for our nutritional segment, Ms. Tanya Green. Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And, uh, and let me tell you how to get in touch with the show if you have any questions, which I hope you do. Because this is actually a, uh, a, a, a very important topic and, and one that most people don't realize is actually out there. It's actually a thing. And the, like I said in the intro, uh, you know, you may be wanting to turn this off because you're not a quote-unquote senior. I'm telling you, valuable information for you actually protecting yourself for life. Give us a call at our air code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, just like my wife says, Levi Garrett, Garrett at personaledgefitness.com. You can also reach us. That's our website, personaledgefitness.com. You can contact us on Facebook at Personal Edge Fitness. Hit me up on X at Team PE if you're so inclined. All right, big topic. I've actually spoken about this before. And, uh, but I haven't done it with you, and, and I'm so glad that we're doing, we're doing this and diving into it from a nutritional standpoint because the information that you've brought forward about this is, is, is amazing. Uh, tell, me, tell us briefly, sarcopenia, the concerns, what is it? Give me some background on it. Well, and I want you to jump in here too. Oh, I will. Believe okay. me. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So sarcopenia is going to be um, – it's going to affect elderly population – and it's where they're losing muscle mass. Right. You see atrophy in the muscle, and um, and then you can see they're more of a fall risk. Right. Um, lower energy and just their ability to um, to do life is compromised. I like I like to break it down even. Excuse me for interrupting, but yeah. but break it down even easier because I I, I think of sarcopenia as the frailty <laughs> that we associate with time passing on a calendar. You know, the <laughs> fact that you know, gosh, man, when, when my grandmother was younger, she was an Olympic sprinter. She was this that and the other. But you know, now that you know she's she's older, so she obviously obviously automatically doesn't have this ability that that is to me what what sarcopenia is and uh but it's a i, I honestly think it's something we've done to ourselves but we'll, we'll get into that we'll get into that so um and and you actually brought a, a fantastic study uh to 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 my attention from the the journal of aging research which was phenomenal mm. talking about this but get into if you would talk about um uh, how does how does how does it develop? You know, a lot of people think it's just time passing on a calendar. It's not. It's obviously not. And this, this is one of many studies that proves that. Talk about the what leads to that, that, that sarcopenia, that frailty. Well, um, I think it happens over a, I think it happens over a, a, a length of time and our, uh, in our lives, our lifestyles just change. Right. Uh, we may go from a house full of children or just a busy lifestyle because of work um, and, uh, time slows down and, um, we don't put, maybe because we think we've earned it, we don't put as much effort into things. Right. <laughs> true. True. Exactly. Um, but just with the whole, um, retiring, um, I think, I think people, I think a lot of it is lifestyle, uh, food wise, which is a big component of this. Yes. Um, as we age, things start to happen. Uh, uh, chewing can be difficult. Our, right. our, our teeth can change. Um, our sense of smell can change. Right. And, um, and, you know, I, th I think a lot of it is due to um, education and awareness. Right. True. As well about True. nutrition and about exercise. I agree. Um, 
that generation, right, that is that we would put in the elderly um, yeah, senior category population. right now, right. Uh, you know, 40 years ago, their idea of nutrition and exercise was completely different. Oh, extremely. Yeah, extremely. we've talked about that a lot oh, before. Yes. Um, new, uh, being healthy or losing weight or whatever was cutting cali- calories drastically. Right, and exactly. exercise really didn't have anything to do with it. Mm-mm. No, definitely, it was not. just drastic calorie cut. Right, um, so that can still be a mindset for that population. Right, um, and then, like I said, exercise may or may not have been on their radar. Well, the, the, w- the way I relate it is is in something I've said I've said this on several times on the show uh, because of that, and that's why you've got to look at the whole the whole picture. I love the fact that you're taking this from the lifestyle approach, you know, that where the four components I call of, uh, of 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 reduced ability, which is what we actually talk about is aging. It's not; it's reduced ability, and the four components of ability are fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, and mindset. If you get all those four right, really, there's no reason for reduced ability. But the reason that you look at the education. You look at the history. You look at you look at um, uh, that generation. What they learned, what they knew, what they what they were taught, what was ingrained mm-hmm. in them. And uh, one of the things that came out during that time, uh, we we you and I talk about it all the time, and that is what happened in 1953 with with the with the uh, uh, the the lipid hypothesis and right. the change in the food guide pyramid and in the you know don't eat red meat, don't eat these things, whatever. That was that's in their that's in their memory banks. Right. That's in there's there there and, and this this generation you look at the great it's the greatest generation and baby boomers both of them, and uh, and I've always said that their their approach to nutrition typically was cut back or cut out, mm-hmm. you know no matter what be thin, and then when it came to any challenge, if, if something was difficult just work harder, well that relates to exercise. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the, the the client that I had come in, he was a physician, and he was actually recovering from uh, some some cancer treatment. He was coming back. He was doing really well. And uh, and we were actually hitting three days a week, doing doing great. And then he said, you know, I will, I will be at my best when I can come in every single day and do every one of these machines. Whoa, wait a second. But his thought process, more must be better. Right. And, uh, and, and so if we're looking at this from a nutritional standpoint, what I saw, you know, I saw in this article a lot. And that is um, the the what was caused in the sarcopenia. I heard th- I heard this being said many many times. Um, undernutrition, mm-hmm. um, the, the the repetitive low quantity, um, reduced intake, and we're and we're seeing this we're seeing this throughout. What kind of things are are we are we are we tending to lose or cut back on that's causing the sarcopenia? Mm-hmm. Well, I think. Um I, and again, I I want to um, I want to bring this out again. Awareness right. and education. Yes. If you know what it is to eat healthy, and if a, you understand the importance of protein, right. And if you understand the importance of water, then your awareness that at least can help you say, okay, I know I need to be getting this in. I know I need to be doing this. I may have some. Um, I may have some obstacles in the way, yeah. but what can I do to overcome those? How can I get um, what I need in? Sure. Um, but so the um, people people tend to decrease their calorie intake and their de- decrease their protein intake, and I think a lot of times just out of um, out of ease. Um, yes. Let's say if an elderly person uh, is now living alone. Right. And they've never lived alone before. Right. Um, I know when my husband and kids are out, you know what I have for dinner? Mm. Cereal. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Very because I, d- I may not want to cook that night because every other night I cook. Right. So uh, it could be that. Right. And again, if there's, if there's um, not an awareness of I know I need to be doing this, sure. Sure. then – the easy thing to do is what um, is what people are going to turn to, and again, especially the the older you get, if it's harder, right, then you you may tend to uh, to take the easy way out. And, and well, and, and, and use that in my in my live age discussion when we talk about lifestyle, and that is that we're in a constant state of seeking less activity. You know, we're looking for the close parking mm-hmm. space. Whatever we're going to take the we're not going to take the stairs. We're going to take the elevator. We're going to go with the escalator. Uh, a lot of us are seeking retirement, mm-hmm. the the ultimate slowdown. So yeah, we're looking for an easier path. So, but 
but I will say that, that and that causes a reduction in calories. Oh, we're just going to have cereal. That's an example I use when I talk about the lifestyle. But, the, the, um, but, but there are easy ways. There are easy ways to combat this, too. We'll get, we'll get to that in a minute, but I want to talk a little bit more protein. Mm-hmm. All right, c- calories get reduced. Mm-hmm. Protein gets reduced. Mm-hmm. I saw something else in the article you sent me, um, uh, vitamin D mm-hmm. getting reduced. Yes, very interesting. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Um, and, and, you know, of course, that's something that we, that we get from the sun. Right. And uh, so if we're not outside as much. Shut in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. going to cause that too. Yeah. That's something I probably want to do a podcast at some point. Tom is on on vitamin D. I sure. didn't. I d- I've come to realize how incredibly important that that particular vitamin. Yeah, is. Yeah, it's really kind of it. Uh, I've seen it get a lot more attention and right. popularity since yeah. COVID. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that was all of a sudden a supplement that everybody <laughs> yeah. was taking. Yeah, yeah vitamin of course. D. And why? Because everybody was shut in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, when get back getting back to this though, lifestyle changes as as um. As time passes on a calendar, automatically, some of the problems that challenges we're we're seeing that would would cause a well, someone not to take in as many calories, uh, besides the the what you're talking about the education, mm-hmm. which is what we're trying to do here, mm-hmm. which I agree with, but also y- the physical challenges, the um, the problem chewing. Mm-hmm. Um, also noticed in the article that we're talking about uh, uh, the sense of smell mm-hmm. not being as keen. I didn't think about how that would affect taste and what have you yes you know? yes and all you have to think about is the last time you were sick and you your nose was you were very congested exactly and you couldn't taste anything right and you can still eat right but it tastes different exactly uh it may not be as enjoyable or um or it may actually taste different right, right. um but yes that is that's definitely a factor and again it it's a it's an awareness well this right. tastes different i don't think i want to eat it but but I know I need to. Right, exactly. I know exactly. I need to. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely um, physical changes that can happen that are directly gonna, going to affect the way, the amount, the type of food that um, that somebody eats. There, right. There's obstacles. But, again, if you get with the right person. Right. Um, they can be overcome. And coming up at the end of this, we have some answers to that, which I think are fantastic because making this simple. All right, let's try to, it's like we, you, you uh, have always approached as far as working with somebody in their diet. It's the same approach we use, and that is, okay, instead of reinventing the wheel, what are you doing? What changes can, what simple changes can we make? And there's some simple changes in here, I think, that, that we're going to get to at the end. I, w- I want to go back to something you brought up and, and uh, was so important. And that was basically, historically, what have you done at a younger age? And this is what I was talking about in the intro. If you thought about turning this off because you're not in the senior population, listen up. This is is fantastic. Can you dive into that a little bit? This study found a a correlation between muscle mass at an older age and muscle mass at a younger age. Right. And basically what that is saying is the more muscle mass that you are able to achieve at a younger age and through your life. Right. Yeah. The less you tended to lose right. and the more you could gain, sure. the more you could gain back. Right. As um, at, at an elderly age, which, um, you know, all the time you say this, I say this. But it is a lifestyle. It, it, this Period. is a, it's a Absolutely. marathon. Absolutely. This, it is what you're doing day in and day out. Right. It is not one thing that you do one time and you achieve one goal and then you forget about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, for all of you that are not in that elderly <laughs> ca- uh, category, the what you're doing now, muscle mass now, is going to matter later in life big time and also i'll remind you in case you are there and oh well then i should have been doing this my entire life and it's too late now no that's right it's never too late uh, never too late never too late um, every marathon begins with the first step that's right you know period no matter what nobody begins at at, at 10k you know whatever 20k begins with the first step yep and so starting now would make a difference but what you're what you're speaking to and i actually read that article and the whole time i'm seeing this like like you look at a lot of this when you look at a lot of this, you're seeing these studies, and you're automatically relating it to the real world experiences of the people that you've talked to and the mm-hmm. challenges they've had. The same thing I see with our with 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 my clients, and that is the 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 you're talking about that 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 lifelong you know lifelong training of of muscle. Well, 
That's muscle memory, mm-hmm. basically. Your body's been there before. It benched, you know, it benched 200, 200 pound bench press when you were 17 years old. It remembers that. Even at 70, it will remember that. It really does. And so, so that, that, it speaks to that. It also speaks to, I related this to, to the concept, uh, you hear this a lot, uh, of, of homeostasis. And that is that, you know, the, the once the body hits a certain uh, point, uh, of, and it's mainly through repetition. It's not just at, at the age of 35, whatever you're doing, your body just wants to stay doing that. No, it's a point of time. I've run every single day. I have, uh, I've, I've exercised. I've eaten breakfast like this every single day. I've hit this, this size, muscle mass, weight, whatever. Your body wants to kind of stay there. And so it, that, that's familiar territory, the, the systems, the brain, all that understands how to run that machine. It's like taking a, um, a race car driver who's driven nothing but a Formula One, he knows what the gift shift is, the whole nine yards, and putting him in, into a NASCAR. Whoa, hang on, whole different operation. Mm-hmm. But you put him back in his Formula One six weeks later, he feels comfortable again. Mm-hmm. Your body does the same thing. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of that's how I relate to this. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. But, but uh, that's why I'm sorry to go so far off no. on that topic. But but you were right about start now. Right. No matter where you are, but start now to right. make those changes and, and what have you. And it can help you later. Period. Period. Uh, okay. Let's give some answers. Yes. Let's let's <laughs> let's dive into some specifics and what right. that looks like. So so um so I did a little math. Oh. Yay. I know. Um. This is when I'm le- I'm gonna leave. <laughs> You're doing math now. I'm lost. So go ahead. No. <laughs> so and. Don't don't get too bogged down in this, but let's let's take a hundred and forty pound person, and we're talking about the elderly population, and right. we are talking about sarcopenia. Yes, okay? exactly. All right, sarcopenia, so that's our goal. Basically, that 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 atrophy of muscle, we've lost uh, function. We're trying to come back from. Right. It. So that's what I'm speaking to. Right. Okay. So let's take a hundred and forty pound person, and um, if we the recommendations out now are that they get somewhere around one to one point two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight right don't get too hung up in that hang on she's gonna have it yeah (laughs) but so so what that's gonna look like is about half a gram of protein per pound of body weight and that would be a a a minimum you could certainly get more more than that so if we're at 140 pounds and we divide that by two we're at about 70 grams of protein per day for a 140 pound person. Okay. So that's pretty easy. Right. So what does that look like if we're trying to get, actually eat that? Right. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. So, Break um, that into real world. This is a right. little about yeah, what you let's do. Make, so, so again, a little bit of math. Um, so there, there are about seven grams of protein in an ounce of meat roughly. So if I've got my deck of cards or the palm of my hand size meat, whatever kind of meat it is, um, you're looking at 21, 25, as much as 27 grams of protein in that serving. And now, listen, listen, excuse me for interrupting. Listen to the scale she used. That's what I love about your real world approach to this. Mm-hmm. It's a deck of cards. It's mm-hmm. the size of the palm of your hand. Mm-hmm. Let's don't go. Let's don't break out the protractor. Mm-hmm. Right. And I mean, you know. I mean, in like a, a chicken breast right. is two of those. Yeah. I mean, there you a, go. A, a chicken breast is, is big usually. Right. Um, so anyway, so if we're just looking at a, at a small portion of meat, you're looking at somewhere 21, 25 grams of protein. Right. Okay. It's a heck so, of a lot too. So if you had that twice a day, let's say lunch and dinner, that's 50 of my 70 grams that I'm shooting for. Fantastic. Okay. Right. Now at breakfast, let's say uh, that you were really feeling industrious and you cooked something for breakfast. Right. Um, like, like the Kodiak cakes. Yeah. Which are um, a pancake uh, mix that has added protein. And if you use the egg and the milk, you can get like 15 grams of protein. It's awesome. In a pancake. Yeah. Okay, um, and I was just telling Garrett about um, something I saw at the grocery store yesterday, which right. I bought because I wanted to try it. Um, it's by Oikos Yogurt, and it is a drinkable yogurt. It's 10 ounces, which is not much at all, Mm-mm. and it has 20 grams of protein on it. That's a huge bang for so your buck. So even if you just wanted to knock that down for breakfast, right. you've got 20 grams of protein 
in 10 ounces of liquid wow. and it doesn't have lactose. Now oh, that is better. that yeah. is something we hadn't mentioned. Right. The possible digestive issues sure. that can happen to some people as they age. Right. Lactose intolerance or just, you know, the inability to digest certain foods that, you know, you hear people say, I just can't really eat that anymore. Right. But uh, but this particular product doesn't have lactose. Yeah. So again, that would be a very simple, easy way, small amount of food right. that you've gotten 20 grams of protein. Right. And so 70 may sound a lot, sound like a lot, but if I divide that into three. Exactly. It's not a whole lot. Right. Easy. And, and if I'm looking at it in those types of terms, sure. if I'm trying to get 20 grams of protein, then it's easier to do than you think it is. And nowadays, read your labels, look on the internet, look mm -hmm. under uh, high protein foods. Right. And that's going to give you all, you've got all kinds of resources there to look at. And sure. then it's just a matter of getting it in that grocery cart. And it's, in what you were saying, you, you mentioned the Oinkos. There are, I, I'm, I am always amazed and, and appreciative of all the different protein based foods that are coming out that you can get in small volume. Yes. And I think that's our challenge here because yes. well well let's take somebody that has that already has sarcopenia. That most likely they're going to be they're gonna be they're gonna be small, they're gonna be light, they're gonna mm -hmm. have a small stomach. Right. And it's much like when we're dealing with an anorexic patient, so many people on the outside that know nothing about this, just tell that person to eat a lot. They can't. They can't, right. They can't. They have to slowly increase that stomach size. Right. So when we have somebody that has sarcopenia, it's the same situation. So we're looking for those small, impactful amounts. Yes. You know, like 10 ounces on that. And there are a lot of things out there. But look at that. 10 ounce Oinko in the morning, a half a chicken breast. I mean, right. <laughs> at, 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 uh, you know, you, you look at, we think of a chicken breast a lot of times like this. It's actually this. It's mm. two pieces. Right. And the chicken, so half a chicken breast is typically what we would have for lunch. Right. And then something like that or even a, a, a small steak at, at night, boom, there's your protein. Intake. Right, right. You've, you know? you've hit it. You've but, hit it. but again, that's purposely putting meat into your diet. Absolutely. Whereas you some, somebody in that category, again, that's, that's a little bit more work, a right. little bit more trouble. So it's just got to be, okay, I, I know I need to do this. Be intentional and, in it. And now, um, you know, one of my favorite things to get from, are we allowed to name drop here? No, please. Yeah, <laughs> okay. no, that's fine. All right. One of my favorite things to get from Costco yeah. is they have a like a three-pound uh, vacuum-packed bag of their rotisserie chicken. Right. Yeah. yeah. Breast. So yeah. it's boneless, skinless, right. cooked. Yeah. Easy. Well, yeah, that's just opening a bag, right? And you've got a source of protein right there. You've heard me talk about this when I talk about the, both live age and live food. The the about how protein walks out of the diet as as time passes on the calendar. The majority of that is lifestyle you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And one of the hardest things about protein. Why is it protein? Why is it not carbohydrates? Think of think of the 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 expense of yes, purchasing the expense the protein. The, the time for preparing it yeah. and the time limit on it. I was going to say on the shelf life. Yeah. Exactly, the shelf life of it. Right. And so th that's what typically why it typically goes. So when you've got things like you're saying, and mentioning Costco is fine. I'm glad mm -hmm. they're doing it. Um, but, but that's cooked. That's, pre that's ready to go. Mm -hmm. That's basically warm up and let's eat. Right. And if you like it cold, go for it. Right. But, uh, but yeah, looking for those easy options. Plus, the supplement world, my Lord. Yes. There are so many. I mean, uh, but the boost, the insurers, these kind of things. Yes. Um, uh, and, and, oh, one you and I have stumbled on somewhat recently. Yes. Which is another easy one. Go into it, please. I'm going to have to give you credit for you introduce me to this one. So. <laughs> well, well I, I got tired of drinking a, like a milk-based protein. Right. Like you're talking about, like your fair life and, and all those other things that you can just buy. And it's a, it's a protein drink. And it's great to have as a meal because, I mean, it's, it's, yes. it's thick. It's a lot. It's a chunk. Trying right. to take it in as a snack, is, that's an undertaking. Right. And it's basically like thick chocolate milk right. or thick strawberry flavored or vanilla flavored milk. Right. I'm not a huge milk fan. Okay. So so I went on the hunt for something else. And, and I don't know how long. This may have been around for a long time. I don't know. But anyway. You so just told me about it a few weeks ago. Okay. So, so I discovered not. it. <laughs> and and it, it's called a it's called a clear protein powder. Right. And and it is a a whey isolate instead of a whey concentrate. Um 
so the it's been isolated so it does not have the milky right um characteristic or thickness really that it, that yeah. the um that the other does right so they make fruit flavors out of it right so you add it to water and it is more like a lemonade or exactly. and, and they've got you know, all kinds of, you know, blue raspberry, all kinds of different flavors, oh, watermelon, milk. lime, yeah, yeah, strawberry lemonade, all these different flavors. But it is more of a fruit right. flavor, like a Hawaiian punch or something, exactly. than it is the milk flavor. And this has, it, it's a big bang for your buck because then you're taking in water, Period. which is what I love about it. <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> yeah. And so, so the powder is usually 20 to 22 grams of protein in a scoop. Right. And I like to put it in my big water bottle Exactly. Yeah. that has 75 ounces of water in it. And then it, I, I drink my water faster right, is what period. I'm finding. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so you're getting your water in, and then I'm getting another 22 grams of protein. Absolutely. Um, so anyway, yeah. So that's ju that's another just a good source sure. um, of protein. Yes. And and, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna spin off of that a little bit. It is like it is like adding Gatorade a Gatorade powder to your water. Right. It's exactly what it tastes like, and and you can get like you say all kinds of flavors. For those of you that have listened to me preach for years now on on drinking water and trying to get 100 ounces a day, this this counts. This 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 right. this does count, and uh, and I'm finding those those clients of ours that have they've now they're on the train their their body is craving water now because they drink so much. I tell them, hey, look, we need to up your protein. Add this to your water, and it's it, it is like, oh, this is awesome. They love it because it it like you said, it makes you drink your water more because it tastes great. I mean, you right. can find the flavor you want, and 20 grams of protein. Yeah. I mean, I, I had, had a lady the other day that added, did drink, she drinks 100 ounces a day. And uh, by the way, if you don't like that, I don't like Gatorade because it's too much for taste. Like what you're saying, you're dil diluting it. Most of these are to mix with 16 ounces of water. Mm -hmm. I mix it with 24. Mm -hmm. You mix it with 75. Mm -hmm. It just dilutes it, but gives it a little bit of flavor. Right. And you can control that flavor amount by how much water you put in there. Yep. More water, the better. Yeah. Um, and so you're still getting the 20 ounces. She actually was doing, because she uses a 24-ounce bottle. She was three of those. She drinks five of those a day. And so a little over five, she, so she's at, you know, she's well over 100. But, the, uh, but she, um, uh, she puts that powder in three of them, hmm. three of them a day. Hmm. Wow. And, uh, and, 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 you know, and she's not trying to overdo it. She just asked me, hey, is that okay? Because I really enjoy it. Great, you know, yeah. Uh, the the because that's sixty grams of protein spread throughout the day. She's drinking her water. I mean, it's a it's a wonderful. It's a I think it's a great find. It's mm. fantastic. Mm. But that's just one of the many ways out there. And honestly, like you said, search for high protein foods. Right. You're going to be surprised at how many. I don't like this type of food. I like this type of food. You're probably going to find one with protein in it. There are cereals out there. Yes. That are fortified with protein. Yes. There are snacks out there that are fortified with protein, mm -hmm. and there's so many different ways to get around it. So mm -hmm. I honestly think that, and, 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 and as this, this, this study said, you know, so much more research is needed, so much more research. I understand that, but it makes sense to me that we can look at, and we know for a fact, we can look at the, the nutritional deficiencies throughout the ages. Well, if you're going to be deficient for so long, you're going to cause problems at the end. Mm -hmm. I think that this is... 100% curable. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can make it where it's a thing of the past. Let me throw one more thing out Please there do. that I loved about the article that yeah. it said. Okay. So they, they tried all these different things. We've mentioned vitamin D. They looked at amino acids specifically, right. yes. which yes. you're getting amino acids when you eat. That, that's what protein is. Right. So that's nothing fancy that you have to go look for. Sure. But they looked at specific amino acids. They looked at vitamin D. They looked at strength training. Yes. They yes. looked at all of that. Absolutely. And they looked at them uh, individually. Right. And when they looked at them individually, they they didn't necessarily notice a huge gain in muscle tissue right it was when they put them all together absolutely they said that basically there was a 50 yes. percent change right in the nutritional change almost a 50 percent change when you just did a fitness change when you put the two together right when you it was 100 percent. yes right. and and, right. and like the vitamin d thing it said right. they just gave vitamin d supplements didn't really see that much of change right but when they when it all played together exactly and um and and that again, that's that holistic. Right. You know, let let's approach this from every angle. Let's add strength training. 
Let's make sure our calorie level is there. Let's make sure our protein is there. Let's maybe take a vitamin D supplement. And then with all that is when right. they saw um, when they saw the most change. Leave it to the dietitian to be brilliant enough to bring up exercise and exercise physiologists didn't say a <laughs> word about it. But it does lead me to one other thing, too, because you know, we, we could be on this all day, I know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but one thing that I lead to, and that is what I call, you've heard me say this before, what I call the 20 push-up theory, and that is that I have a lot of folks that are in this generation that worked hard, they're successful. And, they, and so they, 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 they were used to putting in long hours. When the challenge, if the challenge was hard, the answer was work harder. So when they want to attack their fitness problem, the first thing they want to do is come in and work, you know, work me out hard. I want to do a hard workout. I want to I go at this. I want to work. Okay, great. But we're breaking down muscle tissue. If we're not addressing the nutrition side, we're actually going backwards. Mm -hmm. And the study basically found that or found that, you know, yeah, we get a little bit of improvement, but nothing as if you put the two, to, two together. Right. So. Okay, let me stop right. us now. We'll keep okay. going if not. So good. Listen, if you have more questions about this, don't think twice about reaching out to us because this is something very near and dear to both of our hearts because of the populations we've worked with. But give us a call at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can contact me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, at personaledgefitness.com. That's our website, Facebook page. Hit me up on X, at Team PE, if you're so inclined. Sarcopenia, a, a life's mission to 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 wipe this <laughs> basically out of our vocabulary is mm -hmm. just it's one more way we help you reach your level of wellness. Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see y'all next time.